Sick plan. Look at this. I'm gonna be back in a sec. <laughs> this is much better. Now, some of you might know me. My name is Ben Heyman. I'm Hoslings, resident horticulturalist. And today we were gonna film a get out and garden video, but because of this terrible weather, we thought we'd come inside, get online, and answer some of your gardening questions. And by the way, thank you so much for sending in so many. Uh, the first one is from Barbara from Goulburn. She says, what's the best way to get rid of onion weed without using chemicals? Well, firstly, great that you don't want to use chemicals and they don't really work on onion weed anyway. It's such a strong, pesty little weed. Um, the best, honestly, the best way to get rid of it is to dig it out. I know that's not the answer everyone wants to hear, but you've got to dig it out and also dig quite a bit of soil around the onion weed because the little bulblets they fall off so easily. So you want to try and get all the soil around it. And when you're removing it, make sure you chuck it in the bin or take it away somewhere else because you don't want to use it anywhere else on your property and you don't want to put it in, in your compost or anything like that because it will continue to come up. It's, it's really, really invasive. So Barbara, you better get on the shovel and get digging. The second question we've got is from Kenny from Cronulla. He says, what herbs will survive on an ocean facing windy balcony. Well, some tough herbs are chives, thyme, rosemary, garlic, bay, what else, sage. But although they're, they're tough herbs, they're not invincible. So you do have to look after them as well. Pots dry out so quickly in the wind. So you wanna make sure you use premium potting mix. Always, always use premium potting mix. It's two, three dollars more a bag and so worth it. It's got much better water holding capacity it's got more trace elements, more nutrients, so your plant will be healthier for longer. Another thing we can do is water, water just a little bit more in the first year. This will promote the roots to grow quicker and the bigger the root system, the healthier, stronger the plant. And a third thing you could do is on the really hot summer days where there's wind and the, and the baking sun, you can put a shade cover over, still let some sun through and some wind, but it definitely protects it from the harsher conditions. Or if, if possible, move them completely inside out of the weather completely. So we've got premium potty mix, the tougher herbs, water a little more in the first year, and then move them out of the, out of the weather if you can. Our third question is from Jamie from Brisbane. He says, what are your top never fail indoor plant options? Well, the first one that comes to mind is a rubber plant. I've never seen anyone kill a rubber plant. So if you kill that, well done. They're like a plastic plant basically. Another one is a cast iron plant, like the name suggests, tough as nails. Um, some other ones are yuccas, a spider plant, uh, cactus, um, peace lily. Uh, yeah, they're, they're all really, really tough. The, um, the, the main reason people kill indoor plants is they over water. So just keep the water down. That's, that's probably the biggest tip for every indoor plant. And, and sunlight. If they can get six hours of filtered sunlight, that would be perfect. So those plants, six hours sunlight, keep the water to a minimum and you'll be fine. Our fourth question is from Ollie from Penrith. He said, if my pot plant soil has compacted and the soil level is now quite low, do I pack a lot more on top or do I need to repot the plant? Definitely repot the plant. The reason it's compacted is there's just so many roots have filled that pot and it's, it's basically strangling the plant and there's no soil to give nutrients to the plant. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to put it back in the same pot, then you have to take it out and cut about a quarter of the roots off. You can use a, a saw or a, a bread knife is really good for doing it actually, but just make sure they're clean. And then once you've cut the quarter of the roots off, soak it in a bucket of seaweed tonic for at least an hour. And then put it back in your pot and pot it up with premium potting mix, like I said in the previous point, much better than the cheaper potting mixes. Now, if you want to put it into a bigger pot, then take it out of the pot and tease the roots out with your fingers. It has to be quite hairy, so, and because it's gonna be compacted, make sure you tease it out quite a bit. You might even have to use like a little knife or a, a um, chopstick's really good for doing it too. So put that in the seaweed, the bucket of seaweed tonic, soak it for an hour or two, put it back in your pot, premium potty mix, pot him up, and then to finish it off, give it another water in with seaweed tonic. Our next question is from Melissa from 
Dongara, wherever that is. <laughs> How to get rid of lace bug on an olive tree? Well, lace bugs can multiply so rapidly through spring and summer, it's incredible. I don't know how they do it. But the one, <laughs> sorry, I wish I knew how they did it. They hate sunlight, so the first thing you can do is thin out the tree. So cut out the inner branches and even take some, some off the canopy to get some more sunlight into the center. Another thing you can do is make sure you feed the tree regularly. The healthier the tree, the more pest resistant it is. If you want to spray it, you can spray it with pyrethrum, a neem oil, or a soap, and spray it once, then 10 days later, spray it again. So a double application definitely helps with it. And make sure you spray the underside of the leaves. That should definitely help with your olive tree in Dongara. <laughs> the next one is from Kev in Canberra. He says, how do I germinate coneflower seeds? I can't seem to get them up. <laughs> All right, Kev, let me help you. <laughs> what you can do is you can put them in a Ziploc bag with some wet sand and then put them in the fridge and, and put them in for about two weeks. This actually tricks the seed and it will help it germinate quicker. When you sow the seed, put it in a, a seed raising mix. This actually helps a lot with how easy it is for the seed to germinate and bury them down to about five millimeters deep, not, not too deep at all. Then give them a spray with water, even a little spray gun, so you're not like flooding the seed tray. And then keep them damp for two to three weeks. You can put them inside on a windowsill, that also helps. Get a bit of sunlight and they're a bit more protected. And then, yeah, in two to three weeks, you should have your cone flowers starting to shoot. Hope that helps, Kev. The next one is from Rashid in Adelaide. He says, what do I feed my finger lime? It's also, it's also it's in a pot. I feed my citrus with a specific citrus fertilizer and it's a, it's a controlled release fertilizer as well. It's a pellet you can find at your hardware. That way, especially in pots, so it doesn't burn the roots. If you, if you give them a quick release fertilizer, it can sometimes burn the roots. Citrus are very hungry, so you wanna feed them in late winter and late spring. And then throughout the growing season, you wanna feed them with a liquid feed every two to three weeks. So. I know that sounds like a lot, but trust me, citrus are, are extremely hungry and it's almost, you, you almost can't overfeed them. That should help you a lot, Rashid, with your finger lines. The next question is from Diane from Sanctuary Point. She asks, how to get rid of fungus gnats on her indoor plants without hurting the plant? Fungus gnats, I hate them. They, you sit down and eat your dinner, they fly around your face, they're, they're a, the most annoying little things, but there is a way to get rid of them. One of the ways to get rid of them is you can mulch the top of the, the potty mix with a pebble. This will stop the females laying their eggs. Another way you can get rid of them is flood the entire soil with a, a neem oil concentrate. You make it up in a water can, maybe put it in the bath or in the sink before you do it because you really want to flood that soil. And do that every 10 days for a month or so and that, that should get rid of it. Uh, another way you can do it is a gnat eating nematode. It comes in a powder. Some nurseries have it. You flood the, the soil with that as well. That, that works really well, actually. Try and keep your potting mix dry as well. They, they really like the moisture. So if you've got a saucer underneath your pot, get rid of that and, and try and keep the top 10 centimeters of your pot dry. Like I know that sounds like a lot and you, you think you might be hurting the plant, but you need to get rid of these gnats. By keeping the soil dry, that, that will help dramatically as well. And our lucky last for today is Dave from Queenstown. He asks, what is the best time to prune a fruit tree? Well, the best time to prune deciduous fruit trees like your peaches, your pears, your apples, is late winter or early spring before bud break. The best time to prune citrus is after harvest in winter and also in spring before bud break, early spring before bud break. Now, citrus are prolific fruiters so I suggest picking off some of the smaller fruit or even some of the flowers to prevent the fruit coming. And this will take a lot of stress off the tree and it'll give you bigger, better fruit as well. I highly suggest you prune your fruit trees every year. It's, it's really important. It helps with preventing fungal diseases, um, pests, just with getting more airflow through there. It also reduces the height so your, your fruit is at a pickable height so you're not having wasted fruit up high. 
and it also stops lower fruit sitting on the ground and encouraging fruit fly. Very much recommend you prune your fruit trees every single year. So there you go, that was fun. Now we'd love you to send in more questions and the easiest way probably is to put them in the comment box below. And if you were to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's super helpful too. We'll see you in the next one.